let me welcome you in the lecture number 26 uh, in the drilling and blasting technology course. Uh, in this class, we will uh, discuss about the storage of explosive. And for uh, like every class, let us retrospect what we have carried out in our previous lectures. In last few classes, we are being introduced with the explosive, explosive accessories. We have also understand their important properties that how those explosives and their accessories are behaving based on those properties. And we have uh, discussed also the different methods to measure those proper properties and to check the quality and performance of these explosives. And after that, we are introduced with the thermochemistry of explosive and the explosive rock interaction. That means, how the uh, on detonation, how explosive uh, behaves, how it generates energy in terms of shock and heat and how the energy is transferred from the explosive to the rock, then how the fracture or fragmentation in the rock occurs. So, that part is already discussed in the previous lectures. At this point, let, uh, let us go little bit in the other side that how we are going to store the explosive and its accessories. So, our learning objective uh, for this class is to understand the importance of storing the explosive, to understand the constructional design of a magazine, magazine means the place where the explosive must be stored, to understand the different types of magazine and to understand the guideline of keeping the explosive and accessories in the magazine. Basically, this is our learning objective for the next two classes, this class and the next class. But like every class we do, let us observe the video of this magazine. Uh, in this video, you can see the explosives are stored in the magazine and there are few gaps between a lot of explosive and in that gap you will also find out some spaces are given for basically the ventilation purpose. Here you must remember that the most of the explosives generates gases and the accumulation of those gases are must be avoided because those are flammable gases. So, that is why it is essentially required that the ventilation must be provided inside the magazine, so that the gases produced must be uh, taken out and there should not be accumulation of the heat inside the magazine. So, you can see this is a very huge magazine in which uh, huge quantity of explosives are uh, stored and that is why sufficient safety measures has to be taken care for this magazine. So, we will discuss what are those safety measures required, how, what are, how these uh, explosives can be stored in the magazine, what will be the uh, way of keeping the explosive inside the magazine and the explosive accessories, should we put them together or should we keep them differently. So, all this has to be discussed in this uh, class. But let us see the historical aspect of the magazine. You can see this is the first magazine built up in uh, Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia in 1715. So, this is the world's this is the world's first magazine built up in uh, Virginia and this was basically built to store the arms and explosive to fight with the uh, natives of the Americans and the uh, uh, Europeans. So, Europeans kept their arms and ammunition in this building and uh, it was guarded heavily, so that they can fight with the uh, natives of the American. Now, this magazine is now this magazine is kept as a tourist spot and you can see this is very uh, uh, this is the security guard magazine, uh, 10 feet high wall this uh, and this present tourist spot is uh, nowadays very, very popular tourist spot in the Williamsburg. Now, let us look into the classification of explosive a little bit. As per our 
explosive rule uh, and the CMR MMR the explosive classifications are like this we classify our explosive in 8 class okay. and uh, this 8 class the first one is the gunpowder which is basically a low explosive then the nitrate mixture then the nitro compounds this nitro compounds is further divided in two division this is division one for the blasting gelatin special gelatin means this type of gelatinous explosive in which uh, uh, in which that uh, nitroglycerin is mixed with the ammonium nitrate or uh, other things and division two is basically gun cotton ptn tnt primex etc so this is coming under class 3 nitro compound based explosive class 4 is chlorate chlorate mixture which is explosive but in indian mining context it is not very common class 5 is fulminate this is also not common in indian mining sector class 6 is basically kept for the accessories class 6 is the accessories in which it is again classified in three division division 1 is for safety fuse igniter cord safety electric fuse like this Dig, uh, division 2 is the uh, plastic igniter cord, detonating cord, electric fuse, fuse igniter etcetera and division 3 is basically detonator, delay detonator, relays, relays is also another type of uh, delay detonator which is used in the surface blasting. So, basically this class 6 is dealing with the accessories, class 7 is fireworks means which is allowed to uh, use in the common public places and class 8 is liquid oxygen explosive though nowadays uh, we do not use liquid oxygen explosive in our mind. So, that is why it was not discussed in detail where we discuss about the explosive, but earlier in fact till middle of the uh, 90s uh, liquid oxygen was a very very uh, common uh, explosive used in the surface mines. Uh, apart from that the explosive may be classified in uh, some other uh, uh, basis also say on the basis of risk on the basis of risk explosive is classified in four groups category x category y category z and category zz and if you see the severity of this uh, uh, explosives category x basically classify where the explosives having a fire or a slight explosion risk or both, but the effect is local. That means, if you ignite the explosive knowingly unknowingly, the risk is that it can fire something else, it can explode also, but the effect is local that the distance up to which it will affect it is not significant. Category Y is that there is a mass fire risk that means huge fire or flame will be generated, moderate explosion risk that means the explosion distance will be limited not very far, but the risk is moderate. Category Z is where the mass explosion risk is there and the major missile effects are also there that means the gas generation is high and the ma uh, uh, mass of the material metal or the rock we may goes up to a longer distance as a missile. So, that risk is also there. So, explosion risk is there and that means shock generation is very high. Apart from that the throwing of object is also very high that is uh, that is coming under category Z, where category ZZ gives us the mass explosion risk means the shock generation is very high but the minor missile effect that means the amount of gas generated or the flying of the object risk is little bit in that is called category ZZ. Okay. So, based on this schedule 8 of the explosive rules the uh, safety distance to be observed and from there uh, for or from magazine and the uh, storage of high explosive of different capacities are allowed for that magazine depending on the type of explosive. So, this risk type is very very important while the storing of them in the magazine is, uh, is a point of observation. 
on the basis of strength this is already discussed that we classify it into low explosive where the VOD is less than the velocity of sound that means the subsonic VOD in that case the explosive is considered as the low explosive if it is supersonic then uh, sorry <coughs> this this line is wrong okay when the VOD is more than the velocity of sound VOD is more than the velocity of sound then it is called uh, high explosive. On the basis of sensitivity we have already discussed this property on the basis of sensitivity explosive is categorized in the cap sensitive non cap sensitive and cap sensitive is considered where the explosive can be detonated using the strength of a number 8 detonator. So, number 8 detonator that the detonating pressure generated from the number 8 detonator if that is able to initiate the explosive that is called cap sensitive explosive if it is not in that case it is called non cap sensitive explosive in fact emulsion slurry these are non uh, cap sensitive explosive and booster primers these are the cap sensitive explosive. So, sensitivity of explosive is very very important while we are designing our blast or storing our explosive. And basis on the basis of use explosive is classified in two groups one is permitted explosive another is non permitted explosive and uh, we have discussed in the explosive property that the permitted explosives are the explosive which can be used in the uh, explosive environment which can be used in the explosive environment and that is why in underground gassy coal mines or gassy non coal mines also permitted explosives are desired to be used. In all other cases we, we are uh, allowed to use non permitted explosive further the non permitted explosives are classified in two groups small diameter large diameter uh, as per Prodhan the small diameter is considered as the 32 mm or something like that as per Langefors Kilstrom small diameter is considered as to be less than 165 mm dia and large dia as per Prodhan is more than 100 mm dia is considered as the large dia as per Langefors Kilstrom it is greater than 165 mm dia is considered as the large dia. You must note that in permitted explosive there is no question of large dia the reason is that as it is carried out in the explosive environment obviously the charge quantity has to be controlled and to control the charge quantity the uh, question of uh, large dia use of large dia this type of cases are not arising. So, that is why large dia explosive for the permitted is not available only the small dia permitted explosives are available only. Uh, this is the classification of explosive as per US standards. In US the explosives are classified as class A, class B, class C where class A is the explosive possessing detonating or otherwise maximum hazard, class B possessing flammable hazard and class C possessing both class A and class B. So, it is similar to our X, uh, Y, Z and Z, Z classification which we are classified. So, our that that classification is similar to this US classification. Another classification is there in US basis of the fume characteristics of uh, considering the uh, health risk of the users or the pollution coming into the atmosphere though this type of classification is not available for the Indian mining contest. But uh, you can see this classification is that first criteria is that the toxic gases they are should not be more than 71 liter generation of 71 liter of toxic gases per 454 grams of explosive. Okay. So, here the classifications are like this class 1 where less than uh, 0 0.16 cubic feet of uh, cubic feet of toxic feed cube of toxic gases are generated from a cartridge of this one or you can say 200 grams of explosive. Uh, if the generation is between these two this is considered from this explosive this is considered 
as the class 2 if the generation of toxic gases is this one from the same this one this is called class 3. So, USBM limits the poisonous gas mainly containing CO etcetera and toxic gases like NOx uh, 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 sulfur oxides etcetera to 2.5 feet cube per pound of this is per pound this is for pound of permissible explosives. Okay. So, this is the US classification uh, unfortunately in India we do not have this classification this type of standardization of the classification. So, let us discuss about the storage of explosive storage of explosive as per the Indian explosive act 1884 and the explosive rule explosive can be stored in the magazine only and it must be stored as per the provision given in the explosive rule. Uh, before discussing into the constructional nitty gritty of the magazine types of magazine etcetera, let us first understand how we can establish get the permission to establish a magazine, who will give us the permission whether we are able to use the explosive, we are able to store the explosive as in authorized manner, what is the procedure for that. Now, for getting for establishing a magazine first we need to have a license for the magazine and the application must be given for the grant of license in form 22. Basically form 22 is describing that you, you can pause the uh, pause the explosive in your for your own use the licensing authority who will grant this application who will grant this application for a magazine of more than 200 kg is by chief controller of explosive for any magazine with liquid oxygen and bulk explosive basically it is not magazine basically liquid oxygen and bulk explosives are manufactured at the site. So, it is basically the manufacturing of explosive that permission must be given by the chip controller of explosive and for the magazine which is less than 200 kg controller regional controller of explosives are the authorized person to give the license. Now, in this case we have to discuss few more thing first is that explosive comes in India explosive comes under the uh, ministry of petroleum. So, basically for uh, applying this a person has to apply to the ministry of petroleum and the office of the chief controller of explosive is it is at Nagpur and regional uh, application may be submitted to the regional office also, but that can be uh, that will be transferred to the uh, uh, chief controller of office of the chief controller of explosive. Now, the application should have all these applications for granting the license of explosive should have a plan of the proposed premises that means, on the land on which the magazine has to be built up that must be plan and uh, sections of that area must be given or must be uh, enclosed with the application. The site plan incorporating approach roads to the magazine nearby landmarks distances from the nearby buildings roads etcetera must be uh, there in the plan. Then the second one requirement is the magazine drawing of the magazine, third is the whenever the application is made for a company the name address specimen signature of the person of the authorized person of the company must be there. If it is within the 100 meter of the railway line the NOC from the railway is also required. The NOC must be taken from the district authority also and district authority must go for a public hearing and the complaints observed in the 
public hearing must be communicated to the person who is willing to set up the magazine and his observation must be included there. So, the district authority has to give the NOC otherwise no magazine can be license for magazine cannot be given. So, NOC from the district authority must be taken and for that the uh, 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 public notice public hearing is also required and that must be carried out in the local manner. <coughs> we have discussed about that locks and uh, bulk explosives. So, uh, license for having the license for ANFO uh, liquid oxygen uh, bulk explosive is that basically it is coming under this is coming under the manufacturing of explosive. So, basically ammonium nitrate fuel oil that is also prilled ammonium nitrates are uh, uh, bought in uh, into the uh, blasting site then the fuel oil is mixed with that. Similar to the bulk explosive trucks are coming where the separate ammonium nitrate emuls uh, emulsing agent, slurry agent all those agents are there those are locally mixed there as per the proportion requirement and that is used in that blast site. Similar to the uh, uh, liquid oxygen also, liquid oxygen is also absorbed in the lock site to prepare the liquid oxygen explosive. So, basically all these three are explosive manufacturing at the place where the explosive is being used. So, this comes under the explosive manufacturing in the site of own use. So, that is why this comes under the this comes under the explosive manufacturing and for this if it is a mine site the necessary permission must be taken both from chief controller of explosive and the director general of mine safety. So, explosive manufacturing in those case for the mining case that permission must be taken from the director general of mine safety and from the chief controller of explosive otherwise it is the chief controller of explosives and the uh, district authority for using this in the local area. Okay. So, this is the essential permissions required for the bulk explosives. Now, let us see the procedure to establish a magazine for storing explosive less than 100 kg when the explosive is to be uh, possessed for own use. own used under a license in form 22 the applicant may apply directly directly to the district authority together with an application of form 5 and necessary plans for the grant for NOC and forwarding of the application by the district authority along with the NOC. So, in that case the first NOC will be uh, obtained then the uh, permission will be given by the regional. Uh, controller of the explosive. Uh, renewal of license is also another important matter. You remember the license always expires in the 31st March in every year. So, that means, if some license is given to you on the 1st March that license will also expire in 31st March. If it is given on the 20th November then also the license will expire on the 31st March of the next year. So, all the explosive license are expiring on the 31st March and every year the license need, needs to be renewed and this application for the renewal of the explosive uh, renewal of the uh, uh, license for magazine or explosive use must be carried out within 30 days of the expiring of the license. Uh, often what is happened as the application has been made the uh, uh, license will be renewed by the uh, office of the chief controller or explosive or the regional controller of the explosive, but that takes time. So, what will happen acknowledgement of the renewal of application is considered as renewed till the renewal order is accepted or rejected. So, that means, 
if the license is expired on 31st March, the person is applied for the renewal within a month and that is why the acknowledgement of the renewal application is given to the uh, uh, person. So, that is already given and that acknowledgement is considered as the renewed license till the controller of explosive uh, is deciding whether the license will be renewed or the application of the license will be uh, rejected. So, till that order is coming the renewal application acknowledgement of the renewal application is sufficient as the application. So, uh, you, you may have more reading on, uh, on this storage of explosive, use of explosive in the two important for this is explosive rules and explosive acts. These are available online, these are available online in the IBM website, uh, uh, Ministry of Petroleum website that is the uh, explosive controller website, DGMS website. So, these rules are available in these websites and uh, it is desired that you should have a look on this explosive rules explosive acts as well as the CMR MMR of the uh, uh, mine regulations of the DGMS. Apart from that you must go through the uh, book written by uh, uh, Dr. G K Pradhan uh, about the explosive blasting techniques for the explosive and uh, accessories properties and the construction of the magazines and also SME handbook will give you a uh, good uh, uh, knowledge about the explosive storage. So, uh, we will continue this lecture into for the next class also. Thank you.